name is Bernd Geck, leading the design services Europe at Texas Instruments Freising. And as already promised, now we want to talk on the inverter topology. A linear regulator can't step up a voltage and the linear regulator can't invert a voltage. But with a DC-DC topology called inverter or sometimes inverting bug boost, we are able to invert a voltage. And now let's have a look at this topology. As usual, we start with the low impedance source and like a bug converter, we got a high side switch, but we change the freewheeling diet by the inductor. We have to turn the rectifier and at the output, we need our output capacitor. Again, five elements to show the basic principle of the inverter power stage. Well, let's have a look at the on stage. The high side switch closes and forces a current passing the inductor versus ground. That's our on state. The off state, of course, the current at the inductor can turn, so the current will be forced passing the output capacitor, passing the rectifier. This results in turning the positive input voltage to a negative output voltage. That's our off state. Let's have a look at the voltages and currents. At the on state, we are forcing the current through the inductor and the voltage at the switch node will be, of course, the input voltage. But now what happens at the off state? When this diode, the rectifier, is conducting at our switch node, there will be the so-called flyback voltage, the negative output voltage minus the forward voltage of the diode will be seen at our switch node. Switch closes again, input voltage will be at our switch node. Switch opens, roughly output voltage will be at our switch node. And very simple, this area has to fit into this area. That's our minus V out. And of course, that's our plus V in. These are the basic waveforms of our inverter. Now let's have a look at the duty cycle. The duty cycle, of course, very easy. Is the output voltage divided by the output voltage minus the input voltage. That's the duty cycle inside our inverter power stage due to this behavior, due to these two areas at continuous conduction mode. Now let's have a look at the currents. Of course, it's always the same. Current increases, current decreases. Current increases, current decreases during the off state. But here we got the same behavior than we have at the boost converter. Energy is only transferred to the output when the switch is 
open means our average DC current is roughly around here, sorry, around here because this area here must fit into this area here. That's the basic understanding of our inverter topology. But there is one important thing to know. At the buck converter, the semiconductors have to withstand the high input voltage. At the boost converter, the semiconductor has to withstand the high output voltage. But here, at our inverter topology, the semiconductors must withstand the input voltage and the flyback voltage, means the input voltage and the output voltage. The sum of both voltages, that is the voltage that is seen at your semiconductors. And, as you already know, when energy is transferred to the output, during the switch is open, we got a right half plane zero in continuous conduction mode, and so our bandwidth is limited, roughly in a range 1 kilohertz to maximum 10 kilohertz. At the end of this presentation, you can find a link. There you can get more information on the inverter topology, more information on the waveforms and the calculations. In our next session, we want to discuss how to get from an inverter topology to a flyback or a SEPIC topology. If you got further questions, please visit the Texas Instruments community. Thank you very much.